Welcome to Ray Presents. Today, I'm thrilled to have to be joined by Jose Perignon, a multilingual TEDx speaker, a stand-up comedian, and a powerful advocate for diversity and inclusion. Welcome to the show, and thanks for being with me. Uh, thank you for inviting me on, Ray. And I'll just start by... Uh, mentioning that I have a stutter. So for all of you listening out there, your internet is working just fine. <laughs> yes, like I said, he's a comedian. Listen, let, let, let's let's get right to it. Uh, your personal your personal journey with stuttering has inspired you know so many, including myself. Uh, particularly through your, your TEDx stuff. You know, we'll talk about that a bit later. How did you first decide to turn turn what many see as a challenge into a strength and eventually incorporate it into your comedy? So I grew up in Lebanon, avoiding speaking and people almost entirely out of the fear of being judged for being different. Mm -hmm. And after avoiding speaking and people endlessly, I embarked on this very unexpected journey that led to, 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 doing stand-up comedy in uh, three continents and four languages. I often j joke about the fact that I stutter in six different languages. And really, a key shift in my journey occurred after my first ever stand-up comedy performance here in Toronto, where I'm based, it empowered me to view what was once a source of fear and insecurity and really turning th that obstacle into a source of empowerment by, by using comedy to change my relationship with that difference while at the same time also creating a connection with the people in the audience. Yeah. You, you spoke about, you know, you, you stutter in six different languages. What languages do you speak? I know there's French. I know there's English. What are the other four? Absolutely. So I grew up in Lebanon. Therefore, uh, I also know uh, Arabic. I've got Armenian origins, so I also know Armenian. I lived in Mexico City on exchange. I know Spanish. And lastly, I've, I've learned thanks to the French and the Spanish I was also able to learn s s some Portuguese. That's amazing. That's amazing. Talk about diversity. Um, so listen, uh, Jose, as, as someone who has a multi-cultural uh, background, obviously you mentioned being a Lebanese Canadian. How do you, how does your, how do you think your heritage has influenced your, your, your perspective on diversity and inclusion? And how does it shape uh, the way you, you you tell your stories through your comedy? 
So in the field of inclusion, there's a lot of to talk about inner sectionality. Mm -hmm. And if any listener isn't overly familiar with that concept, it simply means that every human is a combination of f f facets or identities, or every person belongs to more than one s s single community. So in my case, I'm a person who stutters. I grew up in the Middle East, and the interaction of those two uh, identities led to other challenges such as mental health obstacles mm -hmm. like the depression and severe social anxiety. And it's the interaction of those identities that led to the to the unique uh, experience that that is my life in that sense s s s someone growing up with a s similar stutter in a completely different environment say an environment that that's more inclusive of, of differences that person will end up having a a a a a very different lived experience so 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 the first point is to c c c consider the fact that the cultural heritage and environment where one grows up interacts with the oh, other the the other demographic features or or the, the variables of that individual and then the uh, second point has to do with language of course if you know so several languages every language offers a different way of looking at the world and, and through being multilingual i can say that my perspective has been shaped by the with the unique ways of exp expressing the self based based on the assets and the limits of that language that is super interesting hmm. can, can you tell me um, Jose sorry to interrupt which language in which language do you find it the most, the easiest, right? Through this, you know, the st stuttering, you mm. know, is, is there a language where it's, you know, all right, you know, such and such, I can operate in a more unapologetic <laughs> way, or is it <laughs> harder in one or the other? Oh, you don't have to name it, but if there is one, mm. I, I'd, I'd be curious to know. So I find yeah. In my case, it has to do more with the time of my life that mm -hmm. I uh, s uh, associate with space, space, with specific languages. Mm -hmm. So if I associate my t teenage years with, say, a combination of French and uh, Arabic, then those are languages 
that have a different e e emotional connotation for me than say English or Spanish, which I learned a bit later on in life, and I could perhaps associate English with the the years that have been more tr tr transformational and growth oriented in Canada, especially English, whereas I might associate French and Arabic to the to my teenage years that were more challenging. Mm -hmm. the, the, that being said, whenever I do a speaking engagement at an organization in either French or uh, Arabic, I might end up re reliving the moments and the stories in a in a s s s slightly m m more pronounced way. Okay, I see. Wow, that's interesting. Uh, Jose, can you tell me? Um, you know, comedy is is a powerful tool. You know, to talk about subjects. You know, like identity. Uh, disability inclusion equity how do how does your you know how do you navigate through that through humor you know, to talk about these issues so the only reason i got into stand up in the f first place was because i had had the experience of going to social events and noticing that if I were to bring up the fact that I have a stutter through a joke, it would change everything. So mm. I'll, I'll give you two scenarios. Say I'm at a social function and I am talking to a group that I have not to talk to in the past. If I go up to them and I start stuttering and I don't really mention the fact that I have a stutter, they might react with c confusion and discomfort. And those reactions will elicit more discomfort for me. I might start to feel more self-conscious and gradually I might start to sh shy away from interacting f further. It, it's a lose-lose in interaction. If, however, I go up to that same group and say, uh, uh, hi everyone, I'm Jose. Uh, and by the way, I have a s stutter I uh, I did not just have 19 shots of mezcal. Then instantly I've acknowledged it. I've addressed it th through comedy. They understand why I sound different. So they can relax. I can relax. And collectively, we we can move past that initial hurdle or source of tension, hmm. and we can have a more enjoyable uh, and a more meaningful co connection. So it's having had those experiences that told me that that comedy could play a role in my in my journey now i will add one last thing to that point sometimes i'm asked if this would be considered self the self deprecating humor if you joke about yourself the way that i look at it in my journey 
It's been self-empowering humor. Mm. Uh, I took something I felt deeply insecure insecure about for so long by for example for example begging my p- p- professors in Montreal to exempt me from all of my p- 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 presentations in business school which is basically made up of of pre- of presentations half the time. So to have taken what was at one point an obstacle that truly made me feel self-conscious, insecure, and unworthy, to take that obstacle and to make jo- jokes about it openly has been not only empowering but also liberating by enabling me to gain control o- over 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 the the narrative around having this sp- speaking disability amazing tell me about about those experiences with your your professors i heard you say that in uh, some of your talks uh online and i i i was wondering excuse me how that how did that conversation go with your your, your professors <laughs> <laughs> i want to know it's like hey listen please don't let you know how, how did that go <laughs> yeah so those c- c- conversations I would describe as being bittersweet in the sense that on 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 the one hand they were sweet be because the profs were understanding and they g- granted me the accommodation in the world of the disability, neurodiversity, mental health, inclusion, it is key to understand the challenges that the student or the employee might have and to accommodate uh, accordingly. The reason why uh, I say bittersweet is because Deep down, I knew that I actually wanted to do these presentations. And had they probed a bit to understand, wait, why is it that you seek this accommodation? I'd have said, well, uh, I'm afraid of being judged by my peers. I was afraid that they would know that I was different. Having a stutter can be seen initially as an invisible disability, because before I start speaking, it's invisible. And so in my mind, I assumed that by avoiding these presentations, I would be able to hide the fact that I was different from the other people in my class because I associated being different with the negative outcome. Mm-hmm. So uh, I, I do think that empathy and understanding are important 
attributes whoa, when accommodation is being requested. At the same time, it's also healthy to to start a c c conversation with the individual to understand the the motivations behind this ask because in some cases it might be empowering to to work with that person in order to to overcome adversity or to achieve things that uh, at the moment seem unrealistic so jose you go from i, I find that fascinating so you go from someone who's very you know afraid to speak publicly at least earlier on to now a five-time tedx speaker <laughs> traveling across the globe to give presentations when did you you know decide you know what I'm going to be unapologetic about it. This is who I am. When was the turning point for you? Mm. So I've got a two-part answer to that question. The f f f first part, which is the simple answer, it would be that after the first time I, I got up on stage to do stand-up comedy, I recall having shared the video of of my performance on my on my personal f f f Facebook page, and that act of openly o owning the s s stutter was definitely a. K k k key moment in starting a new ch chapter when it came to accepting or owning what made me different. That, that's the f first part of the answer. The s s second part is that I don't actually b believe in the idea of a of a b br breakthrough m moment i believe change or transformation occurs through what i call millions of micro moments of bravery during which we repeatedly do what we least want to do again and again and again until we start b b believing at a at a at a at a f fundamental level that fear and uh action don't have to be mutually uh, uh, exclusive fear and action can coexist wow i want to i'm going to remember that fear and action can coexist i love that listen jose for my last question i want to know from your experience in your experience as both a comedian and a motivational speaker how do you think uh entertainment you know the, the entertainment industry evolving is evolving in terms of representing diverse voices you know especially those with disabilities and what steps do you think um we still need uh, to to still need to be taken there has been tremendous progress i think in terms of representation, I recall when I was a teenager and I would watch films that had a scene with a 
person who stutters, it was almost always the same scenario where that person was was either extremely shy and someone who who was not influential or or confident and at times it would it would even be in accurately lumped with other features such such as cognitive deficiencies which is simply is not accurate it's s- s- simply a uh, a uh, s- 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 speech impediment and then in more recent years there there have been there have been more empowering displays of of having a disability including stuttering so there's one example that comes to mind and that's this movie the 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 king's speech which i recall my friends at the time were asking me if i wanted to go watch the movie with them and i t- told them guys i'm going to go see that one by, see see that one by myself mm. uh, i knew it was s- something i needed to do by myself i went and it was a uh, v- very emotional uh, experience in terms of uh, of what I think should happen or could happen in the future, it's having it's having c- characters that happen to have a s- stutter, but the p- point of their role does not nece- necessarily revolve around the fact that they have that they have a stutter it simply happens to be one of their characteristics but the the film could be about something co- completely different yeah. yeah based just on the stuttering brilliance Jose, listen, I really appreciate your time, the work that you're doing, speaking about this and, you know, the courage to speak about, you know, all these, this personal experience. And, you know, it's, uh, I like to end my conversations with this, you know, we learn today and we lead tomorrow. So thank you very much. Uh, absolutely. Thank you so, so much for having me on, Ray. Thank you.